Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we'll continue the fascinating story of one of the most famous forms of traditional opera in China, Quinchi Opera. Perhaps the greatest masterpiece of Quinchi Opera is the Peony Pavilion written by Tang Xianzu in the early years of the 17th century. The play explored the cultural and social environment of the time. More controversially, it reveals the author's beliefs concerning love, perfection, and happiness, which was somewhat at odds with the prevailing values of the Ming Dynasty. Four hundred years later, another writer, Bai Xianyong, followed the path taken by Tang Xianzu to Nanjing with the idea of creating a new version of the Peony Pavilion. For Bai Xianyong, Kun Chu Opera is a cherished dream from which he never wishes to wake. When Bai Xianyong went to Nanjing in 1987 to watch a performance of the PNE Pavilion, he found himself captivated by lines sung by Zhang Jiqing playing the part of Du Liniang. There used to be brilliant flowers everywhere. Now the well has caved in and the wall is broken. The pleasant times and the beautiful scenery have all gone. In whose courtyard are people still enjoying themselves? In the audience, Bai Xianyong was mesmerized by the singing, and he felt his soul had soared into another dimension. From 1587 to 1590, areas south of the Yangtze were hit alternately by floods and droughts, and plague was commonplace. At the time, Tang Xianzu had a minor post in Nanjing, and while there he witnessed the suffering of the common people. In 1592, he sent a report to the imperial court exposing the corrupt practices of officials in charge of relief. In it, he stated that for ten years imperial rule had been corrupted by Zhang Zhujiang, and that after that by Yu Shenshu for a further ten years. His report gained more than a little attention, both at the imperial court and among the common people. In the spring of 1598, 49-year-old Tang Xianzu returned to his hometown Linchuan to become a freelance writer. It was in the first year after his resignation that Tang Xianzu wrote his immortal opera, The Peony Pavilion, and it took him just three or four months. In writing the opera, a dream he had not been able to get out of his mind was finally realized. In the 
《牡丹亭》，所以能够做出来。不是说一个作家他有了文学修养，他懂音乐，他就会做出好几本，不是的。唐先祖不仅仅他是一个文学家，还是剧作家，他是思想家，他的这个思想里头有很新很新的东西。他不只是单纯的追追寻我们狭义的艺术。而是他从追寻艺术领域当中呢，也希望得到一个思想的解放，跟他追寻理想。什么是理想？什么是爱情？什么是美满？啊，什么是幸福？我不能够在现实世界成就的，我在我的理想的世界里头成就。杜丽娘就是他塑造的一个对于真实的追求。The original name of the Peony Pavilion was the story of a revived soul. It was adapted from a storyteller script entitled "The Resurrection of Du Linyan," and it dated all the way back to the Song Dynasty. Tang Xianzu made a number of revisions to the tale, and in the process, turned a simple story into a great Kunchu opera script. One day in spring, Du Linyan and her chambermaid make their way to the family garden to play. But after a while, Li Niang feels tired and returns to her room for a nap. As she sleeps, she dreams that she meets a young scholar named Liu Mengmei, and that under a plum blossom tree by the Peony Pavilion, they engage in an intimate conversation. After that dream, in her imagination, Du Li Niang spends many happy times with her lover, but eventually, she dies of depression and lovesickness. Three years later, young scholar Liu Mengmei finds a drawing in a garden and asks the girl in the drawing to leave the picture and meet with him. The girl is, of course, Du Linyang, and she steps out of the drawing and becomes wife to the man she loved in her dream when she was still alive. In this unusual yet moving story, a ghost and a man in the real world become husband and wife. Even can die, die can live, die can live again. 那个情如果到了一种最高的境界的话，它可以打动所有的人，可以感动天地。所以这个剧本很特别，就像白敬勇先生理解的那样，是一种人情的美、精神的美、文学的美。《牡丹亭》写出来以后呢，有好多那个曲家批评唐先祖，虽然文字写的很棒、很漂亮，但是不合律、不合曲律这样的词儿，如果要唱的话。就会傲折天下人嗓子，就给他改，改了以后他非常生气，啊，他说我这个不是这样的，戏就是要把人物的思想感情表达出来，至于合律不合，我宁可傲折天下人嗓子，就是天下嗓子都折了，我也不能改。Among the many voices raised in protest, the strongest. Came from Shen Jian, a Kunchu opera writer from the city of Suzhou, who was a staunch defender of the strict rules concerning tune. But even so, he could not conceal his fondness for the Peony Pavilion and began to revise the script to bring it closer to the established tune rules. It should be remembered that during this period, the pursuit of unity or harmony, if you like, between literary beauty and musical beauty was paramount when it came to creating poetic dramas. From time to time, disagreements arose on this matter. But the preoccupation with unity made clear the pathway that would be followed by those creating poetic dramas in later times. The play *The Peony Pavilion* caused a sensation as soon as it was published. Everyone wanted a copy. The retired Grand Imperial Scholar Wang Shijue ordered his family quench opera troupe to stage it with the least possible delay. The Suzhou Quenchu Opera Troupe in Jiangsu Province. Has its headquarters at Wu Mu Yuan in the city of Suzhou. This troupe has inherited Kunchu opera in its original form. In 2002, the Suzhou Kunchu opera troupe carried out a bold experiment. It invited Wang Shuyu, regarded as the finest actor at playing young scholars, and Zhang Jicheng, regarded as the best actress at playing young female characters, to be its artistic directors. As well as this. It chose two young performers to play the leading roles.
This production, in which all the roles are taken by young people, is called the Young People's Edition of the PE Pavilion. Quinchen 每个人对牡丹亭原著的理解都是不一样，但是他们需要找到一个答案，那就是我们在剧舞台上的表演。我们希望我们可以成为观众心目中的真正的杜丽娘、刘梦梅。我们也会朝这个方向去努力。It is said that when Tang Xianzu was writing the Peony Pavilion, he confined himself to his study pondering over the character of Du Liniang time and time again. It seems he loved the character so much that he almost forgot everything else in his life. In his book On Opera, Zhao Xuan, a scholar who lived in the Qing dynasty, recounts a story about Tang Xianzu that goes as follows. One day, the people in Tang Xianzu's family couldn't find him anywhere. When they finally did find him, he was beside a pile of firewood in the courtyard, crying. He told them that when he was writing the plot, he was so touched by it that it moved even him to tears. In the Peony Pavilion, the character of Du Liniang is really a form of self-expression. In his portrayal of the passionate love of this young girl, Tang Xianzu is in reality expressing his own pursuit of freedom and his own ideals. Don't betray our mutual love. We have built it at the PE Pavilion with our lives. These two lines are repeated in the script. Suppressed by the merciless ethics of the times, lovers Liao Mengmei and Du Liniang experience the awakening, suffocation, death and resurrection of human nature in order to fulfill their love. Whenever a professional Kuanchu opera troupe performed the PE Pavilion for the common people, it evoked an unusual response due to the way it advocates fighting against the conventional moral code of the time in which it was written. At a young age, Feng Xiaoqing from the city of Yangzhou became a concubine, and before long she had a long list of grievances but no one to vent them at. After she read the script of the PE Pavilion, she wrote a poem. I don't want to listen to the cold rain knocking on the dark window. Under a lamp, I read the Peony Pavilion. There should be love for me in this world, but I am alone and in grief. Sadly, when Feng Xiaoqing died, she was just 18 years old. Shortly after her death, playwright Wu Bing wrote his Kuanchu opera, The Cure of Jealousy. And just like the Peony Pavilion, it has been passed down to the present day. In the past, the most important thing is to 爱情美满的这个人生的追求唐贤祖的整个的思想的脉络
是讨论过的，所以这非常的有意思。汤显祖、曹雪芹这两个大的文学家，对于怎么追求自己个人的自由、心灵的自由，都有所探索，啊，所以这就造成这些作品是怎么重要。The Peony Pavilion, written in 1598, promoted the notion of fighting for freedom advocated in the great love story West Chamber, and it inspired the writing of another great literary work, A Dream of Red Mansions. The Peony Pavilion has now been performed without interruption for a period of more than 400 years. Its depiction of profound passion and love transcends age, cultural differences and time, and it continues to touch the hearts of people today. 牡丹亭的演出版本几乎在世界各大艺术节上都有展示。我有一个加拿大朋友，十五年以来毫不间断地研究牡丹亭，写了一本那么厚厚的一本关于牡丹亭的演出史，既在中国的演出史，也有在海外的演出史，包括改编成歌剧版的演出史。呃，这个我非常敬佩。在这个舞台上面，二十一世纪的上面，重新换回他的青春。重新发扬他的生命力出来，推到世界上面去，到美国，到欧洲，到日本，席卷全球。<笑> In 2006, the new version of the Pioneer Pavilion was staged in the United States, the first stop on an overseas tour. Having already won widespread praise on China's mainland, in Hong Kong and in Taiwan, the opera was now being presented to audiences on the other side of the planet. We treasure here in Maryland, as I'm sure in China, um, it is also treasured. Uh, because of its unique uh, refinement and sensibility. In 2000, UNESCO named Tang Xianzu one of the world's 100 great historical and cultural figures in a list that includes William Shakespeare. The Kuen Chu opera The Peony Pavilion, created more than 400 years ago, has long been loved by Chinese. But it contains lines that are, without doubt, an expression of human love as experienced by people the world over. You are as beautiful as a flower, but time passes like flowing water. The wind is like a flower, like a flower. 小时候跟着父亲学这个的时候，我不知道它是昆曲。长大了，我懂了。越优美的东西，它越留不住。我们喜欢花，喜欢青春，但是喜欢的是真实的东西，而不是假花和冒充的青春。这些东西，我们希望它永远是这样的美好，但是它必须跟着它的生命的过程慢慢的结束。昆曲，我想也是这个样子，我们留不住它。是吧？似水流年，像水这样的过去了。我唱昆曲唱得很投入的时候，父亲感慨地对我说：“你们是如花美眷，我呢，只剩下似水流年了。”我对我的学生说：“你们好好的学昆曲，等他们唱得很好的时候，我也会很感慨地说，悠然地说，你们是如花美眷，多美啊！我呢，只剩下似水流年了，但是我不悲哀。”水会这样的流过去，艺术会传下去，昆曲会永远的美好下去。
Tunchu opera reached the height of its popularity in the 200 years or so from the 1570s in the Ming Dynasty to the 1770s in the Qing Dynasty. What was a high watermark in the history of poetic drama in the Ming Dynasty gave birth to Tang Xianzu and Shen Jian, two playwrights of great importance. One of the two stressed the beauty of wording, while the other placed stress on observing the rigid rules pertaining to tune. The arguments between them became known as the Tang Shen debate. Many musicians and playwrights who were their contemporaries joined in the debate, turning an important page in the history of the genre. During that period in the history of Kun Chu opera, a much quoted story circulated among men of letters. According to the story, in 1620, a woman poet by the name of Shang Jinglan married Qi Biaojia, one of the three greatest scholars of the late Ming dynasty, who happened also to be a prominent historian of Kun Chu opera. Both the gifted scholar and his lady were passionate about Kun Chu. The diary of Qi Biaojia lists and comments on no less than 86 Kuen Chu opera performances he personally watched. <laughs> Qi Biaojia and Shang Jinglan enjoyed a happy married life and they were greatly admired by educated men of their time. During that period, most Kuen Chu operas told love stories, and to theatre-goers, the stage productions felt like real life, while real life seemed to be a stage show. When the Qing army overthrew the Ming dynasty and took Hangzhou in the year 1645, Qi Biaojia was a city government official. Then, on the fourth day of the sixth lunar month, he received a letter of appointment from the imperial court of the new dynasty. Two days later, to demonstrate his loyalty to the former Ming imperial court, Qi Biaojia drowned himself in a lake. The happy marriage of this gifted scholar and his lady was shattered in a time that proved a disaster for many others as well. At that time when China was going through a change of dynasties, many people suffered much the same fate as Qi Biaojia. In history of the Ming dynasty, there is mention of hundreds of Ming imperial officials killing themselves to show their loyalty to the emperor, just as Qi Biaojia did. This was a change of dynasties. It was to alter the fate of all Chinese living at the time. Shortly after the death of Qi Biaojia, a woman fleeing the ravages of war gave birth to a boy. His name was Hong Sheng, and he would one day become a famous opera master. The original The Peony Pavilion was written when Quinch Opera was at its height. As author Tang Xianzu is regarded as one of the greatest playwrights the world has ever known. However, throughout its history, Quinch Opera has been associated with many great writers. In our next episode, we'll introduce you to two of them, the playwrights Hong Sheng and Kong Shangren. They were responsible for two other masterpieces of Quinch Opera, The Palace of Eternal Life and the Peach Blossom Fan, which dominated the Quinchu stage for many years. And thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Qi Xiaojun from CCTV International. See you next time.